know that Cassie's friend, Tiffany Red, has come out and said, giving us even more detail on the horrible things that Diddy did to Cassie. But get this. Diddy's team is said to be furious and they are trying to maybe considering going after Cassie or breaking the NDA. Y'all sit down. We got to talk. We got to talk about the NDA. We got to talk about the claims Vanessa said. Do you know that she said this mofo, the only time Diddy would help Cassie with her tracks, help Cassie with her music or even address it is during the freak offs. Do you know that she is saying that Diddy would make Cassie have freak offs, the same ones that she was throwing up to while her music was playing in the background and that he literally tried to go after her friends, too? Y'all, there is so much to unpack. But when we when we're done hearing what we got to say. We got to talk about Diddy's lawyers. We got to talk about those rumors going around that there's an, that Cassie didn't sign an NDA. Cassie 100% signed an NDA. But Diddy's lawyers, mad and power hungry, somehow think that this girl telling what she witnessed and what she saw is Cassie breaking it. Baby, Diddy better slow his roll and his lawyers better calm down because, baby, ain't no way. Ain't no way. First of all, let's get into exactly what um, Diddy's lawyers uh, allegedly, okay? Once again, Diddy's lawyers have maintained that Diddy is innocent. None of this stuff ever happened. He is fighting for his freedom. He even said that multi-multi-million dollar payment, rumored to be as high as $100 million that was paid out to Cassie, is in no way an admission of guilt. In no way an admission of guilt. Baby, but they are, you know what, let's listen to what she got to say, um, trigger, warning, whatever, and then we're going to talk about this. Hold on, y'all. I was about somebody famous and rich, because you can't get away from them. Tiffany Red has written for the likes of Zendaya, Jason Derulo, and Jennifer Hudson. In 2015, she became friends with Cassie while writing songs for her album. At that point, Cassie and Diddy had been together for nearly eight years. In a lawsuit Cassie filed last month, she detailed the abuse she says Diddy committed, including physical assault. Red says although she did not know about the alleged physical assault while working with Cassie, she did witness verbal abuse on more than one occasion, one of which took place during Cassie's 29th birthday in 2015. Red says Diddy showed up at karaoke Remember this? Cassie and a group of friends were celebrating. So he had her back into the corner, and he was, like, cussing her out with his hand in, his face, in her face. Later that night, Red, who was staying at Cassie's home, says she awoke to screaming. Oh, he's standing in the, like, living room area, and she's there. And he was, like, emotional singing. There you are. And talking I was just like, oh, he's talking to me. And I remember, like, I don't know if you know his what his voice sounds like, but, like, I felt like I was in the presence of his monster inside. And I remember like looking in his eyes and I said to him, what did y'all do? Cause I could see that she was like really sedated. That was the first time I ever seen her like high before. And then he says, tell your girl she wants some birthday. And we were like, well, I mean, he's saying this to me and I'm like, well, she doesn't have to have sex with you if she doesn't want to. He was upset. Like, you know, I guess that she, the she didn't want to do with him whatever she whatever he wanted I don't know I don't feel like I could advocate for myself in that moment like I realized like oh this guy is dangerous Red says it was only a few months ago that Cassie told her what was really going on that night in 2015 that it all stemmed from the music executive wanting her to take part in what he called a freak off against her will what did Cassie tell you about these freak offs you know that he would hire these like sex workers and like they would have, you know, sex or whatever, and he would watch and tell them what to do. In her lawsuit, Cassie alleges she was forced to participate in freak offs throughout her relationship with Diddy. Red learning recently one horrific detail from Cassie. She told me the only time he was willing to do anything or work on her music, go through any um, plans, any of that was when. She had a freak off. So all of our music, all my work, to find out that like I spent all these years writing these songs for him to, to refer to, like is just disgusting. In the lawsuit, Cassie detailed the physical abuse she says Diddy committed, including an instance where she was put in a hotel room for days to heal. Red says Cassie recently told her about Diddy giving her a black eye before the premiere of her 2016 film, The Perfect Match. 
I remember one time her telling me that I think it might have been the perfect match that that movie that she was in. And she told me that she had a black eye under her makeup. Do you believe Diddy is a dangerous person? Yes. I do. Baby, I believe it too. Now, here's the thing that's so shocking about Diddy's lawyers now. Again, this is all alleged. It has not been independently verified um, that Diddy's lawyers are now hot because they feel like they pay Cassie off and she should be quiet. You guys, I know that there are a lot of people saying that Cassie didn't sign an NDA. Cassie's writing a tell-all book. None of that can happen. If you guys don't know, I did a video about it, but let me just put it right here. Part of the reason why Diddy settled within 24 hours is because New York State was set to amend, all right? New York State was set to amend the laws for NDAs for any type of survivor, meaning that if whatever reason they spoke about what they had experienced, number one, you cannot go after the person and sue them for a breach of contract. Number two, they do not, you will not be able to take back the money that you gave them to settle them to silence. That law was enacted and went into legislation on November 17th, 2023. Okay. So from that day over, Cassie's, um, and you can look on TMZ and all those timestamps, Cassie signed her settlement at the 11th hour on November 17th. 16th, 2023. That law, which everybody in the business knew was about to be ratified, um, what well, was already ratified, but was actually going to be signed by the governor to go into law. A law in America can never be, um, uh, it must be pro, it can never be pre. So you you won't, if they, they signed it on the 17th, they can't make prior behavior illegal. They can only make proactively moving forward that behavior legal or illegal, if you know what I'm saying, okay? So Cassie signed and Diddy on November 16th, 2023. That is one of the reasons why Diddy freaked out and signed it so much because Cassie knows where all the bodies are buried. Not only that, unbeknown to the general public, there were a lot of people besides Cassie that were going after Diddy for settlements, payoffs, whatever you want to call them. They were seeking justice just like Cassie was. Cassie was the one that Diddy felt had the largest case. Cassie was also through his side, through a lot of shenanigans, a lot of alleged illegal behavior. I don't know whatever it was, but Diddy felt in his heart that settling with Cassie was the right situation. And he settled when NDAs that we now understand them to be were still in effect. The future thing that made it possible for her to write a tell-all book, it wasn't happening. Even that whole 21-day grace period and seven days, that happened on November 17th. I did a video about it. Go ahead and check the legislation. This ain't no allegedly. I stand 10 toes down on this. So what's Diddy's problem? Diddy's team feels like not only did they pay Cassie, but he is mad. Again, this is sources saying has not been independently verified. Diddy does maintain his innocence. It never got to a court of law. And he said him settling with her doesn't mean anything except for the fact that he likes to settle with people. OK. People are saying that if you can believe this, Diddy's team is furious. They feel like Cassie is having a freak off. Excuse the pun on Diddy's money, on Diddy's name, on Diddy's time, because she already got the dip, right? She already got the money. She already got her justice, even though, to be fair, you can never get justice for that. Yeah, the money's good. And I joke about like, yeah, girl, girl, go ahead. Because a lot of people get that money. And a lot of people are traumatized and never get a penny. At least Cassie was financially compensated. But when you think about the mental that this girl actually went through, that money... You know what I'm saying? Yeah, it's nice. It's always better to be have more money than less, but it really doesn't do anything to actually lessen her trauma. Do you see what I'm saying? Right? So anyway, they're feeling like we already paid you. You should be going away. How is it now your friends are coming forward and double dipping? They somehow think that Cassie might be, right? wiping her booty with that NDNA and going left, right, front and center, having a freak off in Diddy's bank accounts, tag team and girl, I just got him. You jump in and get some, right? And they're feeling that Cassie is getting around the NDA by 
having spokespeople because apparently it's not just this girl, um, Miss Red. It's not just other people. They're worried that Cassie is cooperating and talking to these other people that are speaking, might be leaking information, to which I said, y'all ain't ish because, baby, if it's true, if it's true. But here's what I want to say, right? And it's very important to say. This is just bullying. And if they do try to go after Cassie for violating the NDA, baby, this is just pure bullying at this point. Because think about it, right? This girl is speaking from her first account, what she witnessed. Yes, they, her and Cassie were close friends. So, of course, Cassie, at the time it happened, or maybe even after, were going to explain things. Maybe Cassie even explained things while she was in negotiations and settlement talks with Diddy. However, during settlement talks, you are not required to keep any type of secrets or privacy. The settlement and the NDA counts from that day forward moving on. Again, if they do want to do it, it will just be petty. It'll be vindictive. It'll be a waste of time. And it will be horrible for media public relations. But when does that ever stop Sean Diddy Combs? Now, what is Miss Red looking at? Miss Red hopefully is a payday because she can prove that one, she intentional extreme infliction of emotional distress. She might be able to get some type of payment for that. But more importantly, this is the real thing, interference with her career. What if what she's saying is true and it has not been proven in a court of law, Diddy putting his thumb on the scale of Cassie's career literally basically for the at the end of it messed with this woman's career. It messed with her career. It messed with her opportunities. It messed with her money because she was the songwriter. Did he let her to believe that this was a, do, a, a good faith effort? Did he left her to believe that her work product would be honored? The same way he messed with Cassie's career, it sounds like he messed with this girl's career, okay? Did he better hurry up and settle or do something? Because the fact that this girl can say that the only time he truly worked on the album, he truly did this, he truly did that, was when Cassie was participating in the freak-offs. I know what y'all saying. If Cassie signed an NDA, how can she testify against this? Well, NDAs do not hold true in a court of law, especially when there is a criminal element around that. Cassie, if called to testify on her friend's behalf, literally would be called and she would have to testify and she would have to tell the truth. And with Cassie's testimony, coupled with the testimony of others, it said Diddy did the same thing. He was good for blacklisting people. He was good for this. He was good for that. These are all the accusations being made. Y'all, Diddy is in serious trouble. He better slow his roll, take his ego back. He better take this L and start paying all people unless he don't got the money to pay off because, you know, Cassie hit those pockets up hard. He better slow his roll because right now the territory he's getting into trying to silence people that are telling their version of truth, their version of what they saw, their version of what they experienced, y'all, it's ridiculous. And let me just leave you with this, right? I can see how maybe Diddy's team is like, yo, you know, um, she's violated NDA. How she know about all this stuff? Well, for one, she was there. For two, before Instagram was invented, before Twitter was invented, before all that stuff was invented and people weren't using MySpace um, uh, to gossip, before all that... Um, uh, 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 before uh, all that worked on, I do want to say that, you know, if you go to blogs between 2000 and 2012, 14, which is when I think like Insta really in the Instagram balls, you will see that so many people are posting stories about seeing Cassie being stomped in the street. Cassie doing this, Cassie doing that. And baby, they were not on Cassie's side. They were giggling. Some people were on her side, but it is very, very brutal. For Diddy to act like all this was done in silence and there were no actual witnesses that wrote about it on blogs, did this, did that. People weren't in the comments. You can even go to Lipstick Alley and they are talking about this. These are old posts. Diddy's insane. He better back off of Cassie. He better back off of Cassie. That's all I'm saying. Again, 
not a warning, but just the fact of baby, I don't know what his lawyer's doing, but this whole, you're not as big as you used to be. And this whole intimidation tactic, it's not working anymore. Y'all, let me know what you think in the comments. I'll talk to y'all later. Bye.